Welcome. I'm Brenda Lazarus, Food Security Analyst for the Famine Early Warning Systems Network, or FUSENET. Thank you for watching. If at any time you wish to skip ahead, click below the slide to advance. To access closed captioning, click on the YouTube icon. This presentation summarizes the food security outlook through March 2016 for the 11 countries that FUSENET monitors in West Africa. There are two important announcements regarding FUSENET's work. First, our reporting schedule is changing in order to provide earlier early warning and increase the flexibility of our analytical work. Beginning in February 2016, FUSENET's Food Security Outlook reports will be published three times annually instead of four, and the reports will look ahead eight months instead of six. FUSENET will continue to publish monthly key messages to keep stakeholders informed of the evolving food security situation in the coverage countries. Second, in January 2016, FUSENET's work in West Africa is expanding. The project will monitor food security in Guinea, Liberia, and Sierra Leone as presence countries. That is, full-time staff will be working on the ground in each country. FUSENET is also opening offices in Madagascar and Democratic Republic of the Congo in January. See the FUSENET's website for more details on these announcements. Before we start, a bit of background on our analysis. FUSENET forecasts food security outcomes using a methodology called scenario development. Each quarter, our specialists conduct an eight-step process to analyze a range of information and data and develop scenarios that currently look three to six months into the future. Starting in February, they will look eight months into the future. In Burkina Faso, Chad, Mali, Mauritania, Niger, Nigeria, as well as Guinea, Liberia, and Sierra Leone, starting with the February outlook, this analysis is the basis of trimestral food security outlook reports and monthly updates. Central African Republic and Senegal are covered remotely by analysts in neighboring countries. The monthly remote monitoring report focuses on anomalies. On the maps, a colored outline of the country indicates the highest level of food insecurity anticipated in areas of concern. In all FUSENET countries, we describe acute food insecurity using the Integrated Food Security Phase Classification, or IPC 2.0. This five-level scale is used by analysts and the humanitarian assistance agencies across the world and the Cadre Harmonize in West Africa. As we discuss classifications, please keep in mind that when an area reaches phases 3, 4, or 5, crisis, emergency, or famine, urgent humanitarian assistance is required. FUSENET uses an exclamation point on its maps to highlight areas where humanitarian assistance is helping to lower the phase classification. First, let's look at the seasonal calendar for Sahelian areas of West Africa, where most areas of concern are. The red box highlights the current analysis period, October 2015 to March 2016. The off-season, when households practice irrigated farming to produce vegetables, extends from November to March. Currently underway, Rain-fed crop harvest will continue until January. Off-season crop harvest will start in January and continue until March. Typically, pastorals will migrate south in November in anticipation of the end of the rainy season and the availability of grasslands for their animals. Seasonal labor migration occurring between November and May will assist some households looking for additional income. A summary of the outlook. The majority of households in the region will experience minimal food insecurity, IPC Phase 1, until the end of March 2016. However, some local populations in Niger and Mauritania will experience stress, IPC Phase 2, until December and March 2016, respectively. Populations in Mali and Chad will also experience stressed IPC Phase 2 food insecurity until March 2016, particularly in areas affected by floods and where crops could not complete their growing cycles. Crisis food insecurity, IPC Phase 3, will continue until March 2016 in northeastern Nigeria and adjacent areas of Niger. Food access is still a concern for many households in this area, despite ongoing harvests following the destruction of their livelihoods. The same situation prevails in the Central African Republic, where conflict has resumed and humanitarian assistance is less available. In countries affected by Ebola, Guinea, Liberia, and Sierra Leone, food security is clearly improving with the new harvest, despite the continuation of a few isolated cases of infection. The majority of households in Guinea and Liberia are currently moving towards minimal food insecurity, IPC Phase 1, which will continue until March 2016. However, populations in some areas of Sierra Leone will remain stressed, IPC Phase 2, 
due to low purchasing power of households. Here's more information on the drivers of acute food insecurity. Rainfall. While El Nino has been a major driver of food insecurity in other regions of the world where FuseNet monitors food insecurity, it is not a primary factor in West Africa. Average to above average rainfall, particularly in the Western Basin, continued until October locally in the Sahel. Consequently, harvests have been generally sufficient despite below average rainfall observed at the beginning of the season. Harvests. The harvests are underway across the Sahel and will generally be average to above average in the region. However, slightly below average harvests will be observed locally in Chad, Niger, Senegal, Benin, Ghana, and the extreme north of Burkina Faso, following the late start of the season and intermittent early rains. Localized drops in production will also occur in Mali due to flooding and in Nigeria due to flooding, conflicts, and lower than average precipitation. Markets. Market functioning is satisfactory with stable prices at average or even below average levels. Livestock to cereal terms of trade are favorable to farmers. Here are more details on a few specific countries. Ongoing conflict involving Boko Haram in northeast Nigeria and southeast Niger and civil war in the Central African Republic is a primary cause of acute food insecurity for populations in these countries. In northeast Nigeria, conflict is threatening lives and leading to large-scale displacements. It is also limiting participation in agricultural activities and restricting market activity. Much of Borno, Yobe, and Adamawa, as well as informal settlements in Greater Maiduguri, will be in crisis IPC Phase 3 through March 2016. In September, FuseNet conducted food security surveys in rural, highly conflict-affected areas of northeast Nigeria. Preliminary results show that acute malnutrition is very high. Approximately a third of children aged 6 to 59 months in the survey area in southeast Borno and northern Adamawa are suffering from acute malnutrition. In southeast Niger, Boko Haram continues to contribute to displacement within and to the Difa region. Market activity is limited as a result, reducing income from livestock sales and reducing food access. In the Central African Republic, the apparent resumption of violence that is spreading in the country has led to new displacement, further aggravating the market systems, and is a threat to food insecurity in many parts of the country. Following a persistent decline in food availability and incomes, an increasing number of displaced persons will be unable to access food and will therefore remain in crisis IPC Phase 3. This situation could continue for displaced populations and affect local people as well through March 2016. In Guinea, Liberia, and Sierra Leone, most households are expected to be able to meet essential food and non-food needs due to the ongoing average harvest, the gradual recovery of economic activities, regular rice imports from international markets, and stable food prices. Consequently, minimal IPC Phase 1 acute food insecurity is expected in most areas of these countries through at least March 2016. However, due to a slower recovery from Ebola-related shocks in Sierra Leone, poor households in Kenema, Calhoun, Cambia, Pujahun, Port Loco, Tokolili, and Kano continue to face reduced purchasing power which is preventing them from fully meeting their non-food needs, such as education and health care costs. These seven districts, therefore, are projected to be in stressed IPC Phase 2 through March 2016. Before closing, a reminder to check the reports on our website for more detail. You may also subscribe to alerts on specific countries or regions. Once you've signed up, we'll send an email whenever a new report is posted. And of course, you can learn about new reports by following us on social media. Thank you for listening. Our next video briefing is scheduled for March 2016.